Well, I think that right now the rates, uh, at least a couple weeks ago, reached a 30-year low. So the phone just wouldn't stop. And uh, we're trying to lock as many people into these low rates and the refinances. But a lot of them are predicated on the, uh, on the appraisal. And the appraisal has a lot to do whether or not it makes sense for you to refinance. I mean, you know, let's say that you bought a house two years ago mm -hmm. and you put down 20%. And you're at six percent, which would actually be really good if people had put down six right. percent. You know, and yeah. then now now they want to go to refinance to get a rate of five percent. Let's say, well, we're going to do a new appraisal. Well, if you went from twenty percent equity down to ten percent equity, you're going to end up what they call private mortgage insurance, which can be expensive, and that's going to cut into your savings mm -hmm. of whether or not it made sense to even do the refinance. So all that has to be factored in, and a lot of that's not going to be known until after you apply because we have to do an appraisal. So. Right. Do, do buyer or people who are looking to refinance end up paying that appraisal themselves? Yes, now that's part more? of the closing costs. Yes. And what we typically mm -hmm. do is collect the appraisal fee mm -hmm. as an application fee and then just credit it back at closing when they close. Correct. Mm -hmm. and, you know, the appraisals are, um, it, it's an interesting topic of conversation and it's very geographic. Um, some communities have managed to hold their value, mm -hmm. other communities have declined it you know, rates that are more rapid than their neighboring right. communities. Mm -hmm. So it's very hard from our perspective to be able to advise the consumer up front. And a lot of people will say, oh, I Zillowed my house or but my assessed value is this. So let me just explain right. that maybe for right. a quick sec. So there's a website called Zillow.com. Right. That's correct. Z-I-L-L-O-W.com. And what that does is you can put in your exact address and it will give you Zillow's estimate of what your home is worth. But more and more that has its limitations because it doesn't, it, it looks at comparable sales in the area as I understand it, but it doesn't include some of the things like the work you've done on the house, of course. the state of the house, you know, just a lot of the other things that we'll figure in. It's strictly statistical. It's purely statistical and there's so many qualitative, not just quantitative points that go into how an appraiser will come up with a value on the home, right? And one so of the things continue. that's yeah, that's changed too is that the appraisers were always required just to provide in determining their value three other properties comparable to yours. Now they have to provide somewhere between five and eight, depending upon how difficult the house is to appraise. Right. So that becomes more difficult because it's hard to find things that have mm. sold um, in those markets. But um, one of the other phenomenon I've been seeing lately is where in certain towns where assessed values have always been under the appraised value, mm -hmm. that's been flipping. Right. So that what the town is saying your house is worth has actually started to be greater than what the market comparables are saying. So um, one good thing if you get an appraisal that doesn't allow you to refinances, right. it might let you go to the town and fight your assessed value right. and help you with your yeah. taxes. Yeah, so there's sort of, right. Right. The silver lining of a poor appraisal. Right, <laughs> right. That's a very good point. Right. Right. Is part of what's happening that the assessment is usually a year delayed? And that's yes. why the assessment. It, it always it depends on the town too. Will be different. So actually, my taxes in my town just went down this year, which was shocking to me. I wasn't expecting <laughs> right. that. It went down by three hundred bucks. It's a nice bonus. So right. that was it. Yeah. But even like here in Somerville, we're a community bank here in Somerville, and there are different sections of this town. I'm looking at these appraisals coming in, and depending on what zip code you are in Somerville, it seems like uh, other wow. spots have maintained themselves better than others, especially up in the Davis Square. It's done very well. And the you thing to really themselves. note, too, as you Thank talk you. about that, is that areas of various towns that have been subject to more foreclosures or um, mm. bank sales, those are going to affect the value of your home. If you live next door mm. to a house that has just been sold by the bank or as a result of foreclosure, that low price, because typically the banks just want to sell the house to um, get paid off on the mortgage. So if the house has a market value of 400 but the owner owed 300 and the house is in foreclosure the bank is just willing to sell that to be a hundred percent on that on that loan to recover to recover their, their three hundred thousand mm. dollars so you're living next door to a house that was worth 400 that just sold for 300 because it was in foreclosure and that is greatly impacting people's values so in communities where there mm. are a lot of foreclosures um, you're seeing that start to really impact values that makes a lot of sense because when they're looking at comparable that's sales, it. they're going to look at that 300. That's they're not right. going to see and it. That's as affecting a your appraisal. Right. Absolutely. That makes a lot of sense. And that's and it's affecting tough you directly. There's nothing we can do about it. Right. right. Not a thing until the markets start to pick up again and home sales start again, you know, to pick up all the way around. Right.
Right. Is there a way that we can explain just briefly how we're in the state we are in terms of what's happening with foreclosures? Just for, I know it's a big topic and I could do an entire right. show or two on that. Can one uh, of you? Yeah, I would, uh, I can give you a real statistic that I read in a magazine, some sort of mortgage, I can't remember the article, but mm -hmm. in San Diego in 2005, 25% of the mortgages that year were written under an option-only arm. Option-only arm is a negative amortization product where it gives you a very, very low payment. It's an adjustable rate loan, and, but it gives you a very low payment because it's actually tacking the interest onto the principal that you owe. Well, it's, not, it's pretty simple to figure out. If you start owing more and your property value start going down, now you're really picking up some steam on the difference between what your property is worth and the appraisal value. And part of what's happening is right. they either you can't afford your payment now, right? In or, terms of, or basically or you're looking at this, it, right? right? Because it has. See, that's what's also tricky. I think that sometimes it had an, uh, you know, a clause in there that people may not have realized that they're then getting called that the principal can't exceed right. 105 percent of your right. value. Exactly. Right. I think the other piece of that is in these economic times. Um, when people bought in the past several years, there were many products that were available for very little down payment, right. um, mm -hmm. for very little income verification. And now the values have dropped below what you owe, which mm -hmm. are, are referred to as underwater mortgages. Um, and perhaps you've lost your job. So you're looking at a home that you have negative equity in and an inability to pay it. Right. There's no emotional tie to stay in that home. It becomes easier, if mm. you will, despite well, the implications on your credit, for some people to say, you know, I can't afford this anymore and I have no option. I can't get a new loan because I have no job and I have no equity. And if your bank isn't willing to negotiate with you to allow you to stay in the home, which they are trying to develop more and more programs for people who are in trouble, which is a very positive thing. Um, but I think that, that went, before those were available, people were simply walking away because they couldn't right. afford to stay there. And it's tough because I think that there is actually an emotional tie that, that people have to their homes, but then they get to some it's point where it's like they cross over and they say, I just can't do it, and then they kind of throw up their arms. Instead of making that choice sooner, you know, my company is own your money. And it's like, how do you own your money now mm -hmm. instead of waiting until it's too late? Because I feel like what's happening is that people stayed in their homes hoping maybe something would be different or not expecting the change in circumstances, and then all of a sudden now they're a lot more stuck than they ever expected that they would be by not selling or downsizing right. or even making that choice initially to have bought into a home that may have been a little bit above their means. Mm -hmm. So what that gets to now is the topic of refinancing that you had mm -hmm. touched on briefly. Right. And we all read the papers and we see how low the rates are going. So I feel like it's a very salient topic, very relevant right now, for us to think about, okay, so who can refinance? Who's really in a good position? And now more and more, with all the changes happening in the industry, what is that doing to rates? Because as I understand it, rates now and the calculation of rates are not what they used to be. It's not just like you pick up the paper and you're like, okay, look, you know, the rate is 5%. Right. And you know, you touched on and kind of gave us an average right. rate, but even that rate could probably differ between you, you know, and you and me in terms of where we live that's, that's and our correct. credit and all these things. So I think that it's so important for people to understand, can I refinance, you know, what kind of equity do I have to have in my house? What's going to be affecting my rates? because it's tricky. You know, even in my case, I run my own company now. When I refinance, I've refinanced three times in total, right, with my right. home. And I don't think that I could refinance right now, which is tough to think about, you know? And even though I have a business, you know, it's doing well, it's not what I had with my very stable right. job from before. And so it's just a different environment that we're in, and I think it's relevant if Maybe why don't you start? Well, I, I think that 95% uh, of the people can refinance mm -hmm. as long, and that's the big if, they still have equity in their property, enough equity to do it. Right. Um, but, you know, the rates right now, the rates at least two weeks ago, they reached a 30-year low. They have gone up in the last two weeks, and who knows where they'll go. They're all controlled in the bond market. That's what a lot of people don't realize either. They think that the, the government or whatever, rates are controlled in the bond market. That's it. And uh, now there's a lot of there's a lot of happening.